Welcome to Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. Rex. Uh, this is... Larceny. Larceny. Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. From Magnificent Bastard, Nate Russell. Nate Russell, you Magnificent Bastard. Fight. We've done Larceny before, but this is a single barrel pick. 92 But note is still at 92. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's one of those ones where they're doing the single barrel, but proofing it down. Why does that happen? More bottle count. I mean, that, I mean, pragmatically, that's because that's it. Usually, the single barrel process, the picking process, you're you're tasting in a cask, yeah. And whenever you proof something down, it will be very different. Yep. So it's kind of like I love this before you diluted it. Yep. Bottled the dilute. I I don't yeah. know. I don't know. So our friend uh, yeah. uh, Irene Tan, yeah, 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 she's multiple times had things where she went and did a tasting oh, and no. picked her barrel. Oh, they proofed and it. And then she got to her store, and then uh, a month later, all the bottles arrive and they're proofed down to the floor. And God. she's like, "What are you doing? Yeah, what are you doing?" She went to all the trouble. Yeah, and then she's like, "I'm not receiving this." She wow. just because it's Irene. Yeah. She just goes, "Nope." Yeah. And she sends it back. Yeah, yeah, no. And they're just stuck with it. Good. She's Good. like, no, I'm not doing that. Good. That's some sloppy ass bullshit. Man. Yeah. Like if you know you're going into a barrel pick and that's going to happen, yeah. it is what it is. But if they surprise you with it, come she's on. She's also had several because she is a som. She's got a great palate. Yeah. Uh, she's also had several where it arrived and she was like, no, <laughs> this is not my barrel. <laughs> and then she pushes back and discovers like, you're right, that's not your barrel. Wow. They, just, they sent the wrong. They yeah. Bottled, they just bottled yeah. one of the barrels. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, they're like, because the odds are 90% mm -hmm. of the people don't notice. Yes. And will just as, like acclimate to what they yeah. were sent. Yeah. So yeah. It, is, <laughs> and Irene is does not take that bullshit. No, she's a badass. Yeah. Uh, my dad was in a fancy restaurant once. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he knows. I do. Know he's, like, he's, a, he's, a, he's a very much into wine. He yeah. He knows like the fancy ones and the ones that are hard to get. And... Ironically, not a wine snob in yeah. the sense of like, Parsing out every level, but like he's absolutely very aware. can recognize that. Yeah, he's he's very aware. Yeah. So he uh, he goes down the list and he chooses a wine. It's very very fancy wine, and uh, they go and they get the bottle and you know they, they bring him a pour. It's a glass. They bring him mm -hmm. a pour and he does the thing. He you know, squeezes the cork and he smells the thing and he takes it and he goes, "What is this?" Yeah. And the, <laughs> and this this the waiter goes, "I'm so sorry." The bartender promised me you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. I'm I'm so sorry, sir. Let me let me figure out how to make it up to you. And my dad, the only reason he asked is because he forgot what he ordered. Yeah. <laughs> he had no idea it was a thing. He was just like, oh, "What did I order? I don't remember." But yeah. the waiter was like, "My cover's blown." Yeah. yeah. So the waiter goes to the bartender, and the bartender goes, "Sir, I'm so sorry." And then the manager comes over, "Sir, how can we make this up to you?" It's like <laughs> he just had no idea what he ordered. <laughs> yeah. If he had just held strong, like a yeah. you know a criminal in the dock. <laughs> yeah. He yeah, was yeah. like, "Just don't speak." You yeah, know? yeah. It's like, well, this is that. Hey, larceny. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, so remember, this is Heaven Hill. Mm -hmm. So this is a brand that dates back pretty far. There was a, um, there were barrels released um, in the late 1800s yeah. called Fitzgerald. Mm -hmm. Fitzgerald is the name of the dude who was the treasury guy who had keys to the barrel house, and mm -hmm. it was known that he would regularly go into the warehouses he had keys to <laughs> and like find his own preferred barrels and yeah. siphon whiskey out of them. Oh, so he was a, yeah. a proto mooch. <laughs> and so, yeah, no, I was gonna say, so this is your people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely yeah. just <laughs> mooching from the warehouses. Don't He's mind like, if I do. Hey, I got these keys. <laughs> and so uh, they named a brand after him. Even the in kingdom. the 1800s, people were naming whiskeys after good stories, mm -hmm. as opposed to you think what actually happened. You think anybody's going to name a whiskey after me after 200 years? Rex Williams. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Anyway, so it was in. It eventually got rebought bought up by Heaven Hill. Okay. They're choosing this as coming from 55 different Rick houses mm -hmm. that they're pulling barrels from. This, but it's weeded. It's a weeded bird. Okay. This is mm. honey drizzled on oakiness. Yeah, it's soft. Yeah. So, and that is a, a classic bourbon type of experience, but specifically this combination of that oaky wood and the honey, it's like you took a wood plank, you put the honey on there and it just combines and it's nice. You know what's weird for yeah. me? So your brain it's, parses flavors uh, mm -hmm. uh, based on your own particular background. Yes. Not on objective fact. Right? What? I know. 
But my feelings are facts. Didn't you know this? Yeah. Well, they are, but that does not necessarily make them uh, based on factual events. How dare you? Feelings can actually be facts. How dare you? Don't you know this is 2022? But they may not be based on factual things. My subjective reality must be applied to everybody everywhere. And if they don't agree, then they're bad people. Yes, that's true. That's science. <laughs> uh, so when I try weeded bourbons, yes. my brain always puts in Honey Nut Cheerios, e even though that's an oat yeah, that's yeah, in yeah, the no, Honey no, Nut got, Cheerios, got, right? Got and so honeyed oated things yeah. on food mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is what I smell when I smell weeded bourbons. Yes. Yeah. There's a, so I, I would attribute that to any kind of, anything on the nose that would present kind of dry. Yeah, I'm dry In drying. combination with that, that classic honey sweetness, mm -hmm. yeah. I still like eating dry handfuls of Honey Nut Cheerios. It's a good cereal. Yeah. yeah. yeah I don't, um, I don't uh, do a lot of the sugary cereals these days. Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, this is a classic for my youth. Remember Pops? Mm. I never liked them because they got so soggy so fast. No, no, no. It's one of the things where you dust it, it and eat it, yeah, yeah. dust it and eat you it. You get a thing of Pops, yeah. you get a little sprinkle of milk, and then you, and then you, yeah. Yeah, no, it's a very strategic approach to the Pops there. Kicks were okay. They didn't have enough going on. Mm. Sugar Smacks? Oh, no, I liked... Um, the Frog? I liked... The, yeah, they were okay. I liked the... Um, I did like Lucky Charms. And I See, did I like uh, I the... Like what was the one that had sh weeded... Uh, shredded, oh, Frosted, frosted Mini, mini wheats. wheats. Yeah. I liked those because they would soak up the milk. Yeah, they would. And then you would bite in and get that sugar combo. But there's this critical window. Very, very critical. Yeah, yeah. Or it turns into mushy porridge shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's horrible. It's got to have crunch when you bite into it. Mm -hmm. And then release the milk. But if you don't, if you don't have enough milk, then it's just like dry, dry like eating. Uh, like I've tried that too, like a bag of sugar. Mm. Oh, yeah. mm. Man, this is the day for <laughs> off the rails random shit. <laughs> and eventually, you get to the point with the frosted mini wheats. Yeah. Right, where you can tell by the weight of the mini wheat on the spoon whether or not it's too far. Right. Oh yeah. But or not far enough. Mm -hmm. Because if it's like a dry mini wheat, you can just tell, you just feel like just on the purchase on your mm -hmm. finger. It's like, no, you got to dip it back it's in. It's like an avocado. You, dip you, it got back like in. A, you got like a 30 second window. <laughs> <laughs> How many? Uh, we don't know the minutes because it's. Yeah, yeah, well, it's probably why we're still going. Uh, this is the third episode. We have one more still after this. <laughs> God. All right, listening. So the palate, the tannins are really soft. Supposedly, these are six year old barrels that they pull from. Everything about that, you, you know what? I'm going to say the word. I don't care. Smooth. Yeah, it's sort of soft, rounded, slightly sweetened. Yeah, uh, very uh, buttery almost. Yeah, that's a like nine. a buttered pastry. Forty six. I I could be that would I I would be convinced that would be be like in the low forties in terms of ABB, ABV, um, because it's just so relaxed all the way from beginning to end. Hmm. There's not a tremendous amount of complexity to it. No. Really not. It's pretty simple, but it's classic, and those flavors are very popular. Yeah, and this is a good representation of what Larsny does. Mm -hmm. mm. All right. Mm. Oh, they I was like, doing a good job of You do realize, up. we talked more about cereal than we did about the flavor. No, we just talked longer, but I, I gave, a, leading up to that, there were a lot of tasting notes on oh, the yeah. first part. No, that's, we, t we did this well. Trent Tilton, hey guys, thank you. This is Trent, the distiller who made the whiskey. So what are we talking about? Oh yeah, this San was Diego? San Diego's, oh, yeah, San Diego. that cool. really, really, really chocolate, malty, smoky, yeah. barrel tanniny. Uh, PB Toast was uh, a special barley. PB Toast, here it is. Toasted to taste somewhat like peanut butter from Pilot Malt House in Michigan. This was a forgotten barrel, so this barrel spent four years in a 10-gallon barrel. Oh, four years! In a 10-gallon barrel, that's insane. How did you have anything left? Wow. Uh, most of the whiskey was sold around the two to two and a half year mark. 34 bottles, <laughs> that's why. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's about right. <laughs> uh, as you can see, with only 34 bottles, that half left bottles. only 3.4 gallons in the barrel. Yeah. You Good guys are night. you guys are dead on. This is a massive, roasty tannin insanity of a whiskey. Certainly, yeah. certainly not an everyday sipper. But when, but one when you need something crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cheers again, and love all your reviews of your whiskey. Yeah. Thanks, Trent. That's cool. Yeah, I thought that was cool. It gave a lot more context that yeah. thing we were drinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. right, I'm gonna. I give it a minute. I'm gonna go back to this and see what we got. 
Even now, even more, grassy. more no, uh, even more honey, less oaky, and I would say okay, there is some room for the grassiness to be inserted. Hey, yeah, I think it the the oak faded mm -hmm. away and some of the grassy uh, slipped into that spot, but the the honey is still, still there. Strong, yeah. Honey hay bales. Mm. It's still really soft. Yep. Yeah. A lot of this people, is my yeah. go-to if I don't have makers. If I just want a standard mm -hmm. classic weeded bourbon profile, I really mm -hmm. dig Larceny for that. You, you know, I'm thinking um, parallel but slightly different. If I'm sitting down with some people who are very unfamiliar with whiskey, but they've had a few bourbons and they yeah. and they're not really interested in getting challenged and exploring and all that, they just they want something that I'm pretty sure they're gonna like. This has a lot of flavor. It's really soft. Jimbo Kazar, Kazar. I want to see Brianna sample the way over Oaks Crowded Barrel single malt release that is oh, unreleasable yeah. just to hear what tasting note she comes up with for the it. The one I told the guys Please? like, do not release this. Like, yeah. don't pour this except for as a glass rinse. The one you won't let anyone else sample. Yeah. Come on. It'll be golden. So I it's sort of, I really, so here's my fear. Here's yeah. the problem. Yeah. I would love for Brianna's tasting notes to be their own little section on the website for everything we ever release. Right. But. It's one of those things where the more we do that with her, the less we get pure Brianna. Because she develops more tasting notes, she develops more patterns, more history, more yeah. references. Mm -hmm. And we risk right. diluting the drama. There, there is a magic that whenever somebody is very fresh mm -hmm. and unfiltered, those yeah. are the two key, two key ingredients fresh and they're unfiltered, they're not worried about whether or not they're saying the right thing. Right. Then it's like amazing, it's beautiful, it's fun. And oftentimes people that have been doing a thing for years can see somebody's new new experience that doesn't have the weight of all of those previous experiences. Right. And then we'll say, they'll mention something, it's like, oh wow, I've never heard that tasting note in my life. That's fresh. I absolutely know where they came from. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wanna reserve her freshness to that reaction for the tribe episodes, yeah, with instead concept. of instead of for just like another release, a small of release, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, it's it's simple, it's but good. It's smooth. It'll be very popular. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. I think this whiskey's gonna go places. <laughs> <laughs> if you fight me, fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal your. <laughs> <laughs> and your if you drink, heart. may you drink with us. <laughs>